Hello, my name is Barbara Kay, and on behalf of my co-host Susan Pertnoy and the Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County, I'd like to welcome you to our program, Mosaic. Our focus today is eating, talking, and embracing the art of surviving life. We'll be back with our program and our special guests after this brief message. Thousands of community members come together through programs and services provided by Federation and our local partner agencies to create a vibrant and vital community in Palm Beach County. Together, we can ensure a vibrant Jewish future. Federation and you, changing the world together. Welcome back to Mosaic, Jenny Froma. Thank you. Associate Executive <laughs> Director of the Jewish Family and Albert Jewish Family and Thank Children's you. Service. You know something, I love sitting and talking to you. First of all, I'm amazed at the remarkable things that your agency does for the, for the community. I don't think people really understand the depth and the extent of the services, but one of the programs is also a Holocaust survivors. You receive money from the Claims Conference yes, we do. to be able to assist the Holocaust survivors. How large a, a population is that here? Well, no one really knows, Barbara. Um, you know, Holocaust survivors, for the most part, have spent most of their lives kind of being under the radar. They never really wanted to be recognized and identified in the community, and they rarely come forward asking for help as a survivor. Yeah. In 1995, we were the first grant in the country through the Claims Conference. The first grant? <coughs> yeah. You know, oh my goodness, but I, you know, I read somewhere that uh, South Florida has the second largest uh, Holocaust survivors in the country. Yes, next to the metropolitan New York area. Right. And we have the largest number of child survivors, hidden children. Those would be people in their 70s now. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to meet someone uh, who is mm -hmm. one of those ch uh, mm -hmm. children. Uh, maybe a lot more. Well, today we have, we're here for this terrific eat and schmooze, Purim bash, as yes. you call it. And explain, well, we'll get the details of that mm -hmm. later from the woman that's running it, but it's really a gathering. It's a gathering. One of, one of the things that we know about older adults, and particularly survivors, mm -hmm. is that if they become isolated and insulated, they get all kinds of other um, potential medical problems and a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. And so we feel our obligation is to really bring them together on a regular basis. So here at Fountain View, it's kind of like a drop-in center, and Eva's going to talk with you more about that. But we started out, we were told that there were probably about 100, 200 survivors in our community. Right now, we have served at any one time each year about 400. Really? Survivors, and we provide them with in-home care, assistance with grocery shopping, assistance to medical doctors. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I was going to ask you about the, uh, how their <coughs> transportation uh, and about uh, their uh, medical uh, mm -hmm. you know, concerns. You have to deal mm -hmm. with that. We have to deal with that. We also have to um, make sure that we understand the potential triggers for trauma. And so we do a lot of um, education out in the community with healthcare professionals. We actually just worked with FAU students, second year students really? at the Schmidt College, and they helped us write a manual for healthcare professionals. Because there are certain triggers like um, being told to go into a doctor's office and strip, and the yeah. temperature is usually somewhere around 60, and sometimes people might feel really cold that is a trigger, an environmental trigger for them to remember what it was like freezing in Poland. Yeah. Um, bright lights, different sounds. So there are all kinds of, of issues that we have to be aware of in working, <coughs> excuse me, in working with survivors. And, and it's a unique skill. You need to understand need, aging yeah. and then trauma. Yeah, you would have to have specially trained, it would seem to me, people dealing with this. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you develop a format for something like this? I mean, how do you educate people to look out for these sensitive issues, to the level of respect, the le level of gentleness, the... Dignity. The, yeah. It, it's really helping them understand how we might experience um, things like being displaced from our homes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, when I walk into a room, and most of, I've mentioned before, most of the home health aides in our community are from the Caribbean with no experience in Holocaust. 
I say, how many of you actually chose to come to the United States? Everyone's hand goes up if you weren't born in the United States. What was that like? What was that like saying goodbye to people and maybe even having farewell parties and people wishing you good luck? And then imagine one day there's a knock on the door and people are pulled out of your home never to be seen again. Hmm. And immediately they make that connection. So when they go about their daily work with older adults who are survivors, and it's estimated that there are as many as 18,000 in our community. We have 18,000 in just the, uh, our federated <coughs> community. It was Southeast Florida, but you know, the oh. numbers keep growing in Palm Beach. Right. As survivors are really more old and more frail, having been in the Dade area first and then the Broward area. So Palm Beach tends to be the fastest growing area. Yeah, you know, the children of survivors, do they, do they take the responsibility of their parents? Many of them do. Um, I think that for some survivors, they don't want to burden their children. Yeah, a lot of them didn't want to speak about it. Well, there was a conspiracy of silence for 50 years yeah. all over the world. And survivors got the message, you know, it was a real stigma for them. They were greeners. They were the refugees. Yeah. And so they learned to kind of go underground. You know, it's, it's, the challenges must be enormous and, and, and quite unique. But I really think that the government really doesn't pay enough money for them. They are living, a lot of them from what I've read, live at the poverty line and below. In our community, we have determined that 42% are at or below the poverty line. Yeah. So bringing them together and feeding them a lunch is so critical. Yeah. Uh, making food available to them just for their general subsistence. Um, many of them have outlived their savings, are really on you know, mediocre social security if they ever worked here in the United States for any length yeah. of time. You know, when you think about it, I guess uh, people don't stop to realize the different types of, of trauma that exist in, a, in an area. I think I mentioned this to you last time, and I hate to be redundant, but when I, I went to Auschwitz and Birkenau and Sorationstadt and I interviewed some of the survivors, and there wasn't one of them that finally got opened up and spoke to me and said that they may sleep here during the day, but every night they sleep in one of these camps. I mean, it never really leaves them. It never really leaves them. And um, you'll see, even here at an Eaton Schmooze, for new people who come, you know, we might be at a social gathering, and there are many in this community, and right. we kind of look around the room and you see if you know anyone. For survivors, sometimes you'll see and they actually stare. Yeah. They're like trying to see a feature that is familiar to them. Yeah. And they'll walk from person to person. And it's not just a chance engagement. They, no, they're, looking. A, they're looking for their relatives. It's that constant, constant it's yearning, friends. connection. Wow. The need for connection. Wow. You're doing a marvelous job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you so much, Barbara. I'm going to speak with uh, Eva. And she exactly, she's absolutely the uh, one that cares for the social aspect, is it? We have four care managers in uh -huh. the program, but Eva one day came to me after a staff meeting when we announced that we got this first grant, and she was working in a different program, the Enhanced Companion Program. Right. She came to me shaking, and she said, Jenny, I know why I'm here. She's the child of a survivor, a uh. couple, and um, this just spoke to her. So she was our first care manager. We're going to meet her and talk to her. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Eva Weiss, you're the coordinator for the Albert Jewish Family and Children's Service for the Holocaust uh, yes, I am. Uh, program. And you're the one that has all the um, responsibility for developing this Eat and Schmooze. And we're so happy to be able to offer it to our survivors. It's something that began pretty much as a dream for us because even though we're in our survivors' homes and we're providing supportive services to help them remain at home, as time has gone by, many of our participants have become increasingly isolated. Yeah. People who used to live near them, their family members are no longer around, mm -hmm. people tell me I never see anybody on the catwalk anymore. And so our thought was that if we could do something on a regular basis to allow people to gather informally and socialize and provide a little entertainment, we would be doing something very wonderful for our survivors. That's, the, the idea is splendid. Uh, Cafe Europe, 
The concept of Café Europe developed from something that happened in Europe, wasn't it true? Yes, that is true. And a lot of times people say to me, oh, Café Europa, it's the it's restaurant a, on Palm no. Beach. After World War II, when so many hundreds of thousands of people were displaced, mm -hmm. and so many Holocaust survivors had no homes to return to, what people did was wander around Europe because they were looking for something to connect to, a place to go. They were looking for loved ones. They were looking for lost relatives. And the place where people gathered when they came to look for posting of names or to, to see, did you hear about my father? Did you hear about my brother? Were in the cafes. And Europe came to be called Cafe Europa. So that was the idea to see if they can search and look. And, yeah. You know, but is it difficult to get them here? I mean, to come out for the social experience? It, it takes a little bit of doing. Um, in some instances, we have to do a lot of coaxing. Mm -hmm. And in some instances, we have to provide the transportation because our, our participants don't always have access to, to automobiles or local transportation mm -hmm. to get here. Um, now, it, it seems that people are waiting for the call, you know, when is the event So it's this become month? a thing. I think so. Yeah. You're going to introduce me to two of the um, participants here. Aviva and Isaac. Yes. And uh, I'd like to introduce them to our viewers. Could you, could you please uh, ask them to come in and I'll be happy to talk to them. And I love what you're doing and you just keep it up. Thank you so much. It's a, it's pleasure. a pleasure. What if you could change the world? You can. We can do it together. Federation and you. Changing the world together. Welcome back, and welcome to you, Maureen Carter. Nice to see you. You're the program planner for the Palm Beach County Public Schools for the Holocaust Studies in grades K through 12, correct? Yes, That's yes. quite a yeoman's job. <laughs> You've got such an intense position educating our young people on the horrible injustices of the Holocaust. But tell me, how do you deal with such a sensitive issue in the, on the elementary school level? Um, it is very difficult. Uh, what we do is we don't go into a kindergarten classroom and talk about uh, the deportations and uh, crematoria. What we do is we go into a kindergarten classroom and we uh, read stories about getting along. Uh, we may all look different, but we're the same inside. And uh, we may not all love each other, but we get along. Let's be friends and how to be friends, how to accept each other. And it goes on from there. Uh, grades K and then one, we have puppet shows, the tales of togetherness, and they're based on books. And then we go on and you progress. Yeah. So when do you get to the meat of the Holocaust? Is that middle school, high school? It starts in middle school, but the real meat is in high school and the real uh, intensity. And we are fortunate in the Palm Beach County school system that we have at least 15 high schools that have Holocaust electives and several this year have decided to go with uh, full year courses in oh, the Holocaust. That's wonderful that you have the, the funding for this. Yeah, well, that's... this is the schools, the individual schools have decided that this is a priority in their school. And in fact, one of, this, of the courses is being called International Holocaust Honors. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for the kids and uh, they really get to study the Holocaust in depth. And uh, several, like I said, several of the schools have decided to make it all year. Can you describe some of the special programs? Yes, I can. Um, and in fact, we're very proud of them. Um, we're involved uh, sort of with an organization called Centropa. And their mission is to preserve Jewish memory f throughout the 20th century and now, of course, the 21st. And they invited us to Serbia to oh talk about Holocaust education in Eastern Europe and the Balkans. Uh, Holocaust education is, is really new there. It's not that they haven't talked about it, because obviously that's where it happened, but they do not know the, uh, the strategies. They don't really know how to really talk about it. And so they brought us over there. We taught them our strategies, what we do with our teachers and students. And so we, what we've done is we've begun a border jumping project. That's what we call it. And students from the United States in Palm Beach County are connecting with the students in Serbia. 
and our students have received a personal invitation to uh, visit Serbia and uh, visit in the homes and go to school there for about a week or two. And this all has to be worked out with funding, of course. Right. But, um, and then the Serbian students will come over to uh, see us. And it all started as a brainstorm last summer in Berlin when I went to the Summer Academy um, in Berlin. And so um, we kind of uh, brainstormed together and decided this would be a project. So we're doing, we have uh, students connected with uh, students in Poland, uh, Lithuania, um, all over Eastern Europe, Hungary, uh, Austria, everywhere. Have they visited the Holocaust Museum in Washington? Do you go on fl field trips? or? Uh, now we've taken our students. Uh, we take our students annually through a very generous um, grant from Insight through Education. Uh, they fund 20 students. It's through an essay contest. This year we're going to change it. We're going to have an essay contest and a video because many kids find that they can express themselves much better through uh, digital. Right. And, uh, and Centropa, the group that we've worked with in the past, and other organizations use video, Eyewitness through the Shoah Foundation, they use video to uh, express their feelings. So that's what we're going to do. And we, uh, every October or November we judge them and then we go in January and it's a life-changing trip. No, it must be. Do, what, what are some of the feedback that you um, receive from the kids? Well, they just, they, they tell us, they've emailed us that it's changed their life, that they see things differently. We bring a survivor with us. Uh, we bring Mrs. Frida Jaffe. We've brought her uh, for the it's past years. It's gotta be so powerful. And she insists that they call her Mimi. And so they will write to me and they'll go, can I get in touch with Mimi? And from what we understand, they have been writing back and forth to Mimi. And um, they just love her, and she endears themselves to her. And um, we try to have a reunion every year at the end of the year before the seniors graduate so that they can be inspired to go on. But one of our final parts of our trip is to meet in the Hall of Remembrance in Washington, D.C., if you know the museum. Yes. And we light candles and we have kind of like a gathering of our group to kind of process what we've been through because as you know it, it's extremely intense and especially for uh, children Teenagers. who some of those children have never been outside of Palm Beach County never mind going to the museum in Washington and uh, so it, it's, it's very life-affirming life-changing inspirational for them and they often tell us that you know they're going to go on and do great things and some of them have some of them have served as interns at in Washington a couple have and then one got a Gates Millennium scholarship for really? four years and she'll have her master's paid for too if and she was one of our wonderful students it sounds like such an incredible program and very successful and I'm, I'm very proud of Palm Beach County that they actually offer are able to offer such a wonderful and important program to, to their students. And that's, for, uh, that's really through insight, through education, through their vision. They've, I, I kind of came up with the idea and I presented it to them and for years we've always taken teachers. And I said, you know, how about we take some students and um, George Salton at the time, who was the um, head of insight, he agreed and he said it was, uh, he thought it was a great idea, and so it's gone on now. And um, well, you should be very proud of yourself. You. I, I, I think it, you do a remarkable <laughs> job. Thank you. Uh, you just returned from a Holocaust conference in in Fort Myers. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. For a second? Uh, this this year marks the 70th anniversary of the deportations of the Hungarian Jews, and the uh, the theme of the Holocaust, uh, the National Days of Remembrance this year is the American responses. And um, as a lot of people know, the Hungarian Jews were the last to be uh, deported. And uh, the, there was pressure from the Vatican, there was pressure from the United States. But as we know, it was too little, too late. And I believe at least 450,000 Jews were deported from Budapest alone. And this uh, conference was held by the Gulf Coast, Florida Gulf Coast University. Okay. Uh, Dr. Paul Bartrop, who is the head of the center there, um, invited scholars from all over the world. One of them 
being Anne Weiss, who yes, you brought with us. She's also a daughter of Holocaust survivors. Yes, she is. And a wonderful author. Yes, she, yes, she is. She's, going, yes, yes, she is really incredible, and we're going to take a moment and bring her in That's to great. speak with her as well. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Our Jewish Federation has accomplished so much and still needs keep growing. You can help us do even more. Community, like every gift, counts. Together, we can ensure a vibrant Jewish future. Federation and you, changing the world together. Welcome back and welcome Anne Weiss. What a pleasure to have you here. As pleasure we were, to be here. Thank you. We were discussing with Maureen that you just returned from a Holocaust conference where you presented. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Absolutely. It was 2014 is the 70th anniversary of the deportation and the murder of the Hungarian Jews. They came to Auschwitz in May 1944. My book, which is called The Last Album, and the subtitle is Eyes from the Ashes of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the photos in my book are the complete opposite of that scene. Photos of sweethearts falling in love, people's weddings, little babies on rugs, kids on school outings, vacations. I even have a beautiful one of a couple dancing cheek to cheek. I'd love to spend hours talking about your book. You haven't even touched the surface, but unfortunately we're out of time and it's been a, a privilege to be here speaking with both of you. And we are now going to join the survivors as they celebrate Tremendous. their core program. Tremendous. Wonderful. So I'd like to just say it's been a privilege to be here and especially because I've had the great honor of not just meeting, but working with Maureen Marula Carter, who in all the places around the country that I've worked, there is no one like Maureen. Thank, Thank you. you. She is very passionate. Thank you. What if you could change the world? You can. We can do it together. Federation and you. Changing the world together. Welcome to Mosaic, uh, the Landerus. How wonderful to see Aviva, Isaac. Isaac. Oh, how nice. Isaac, you were a uh, child of survivors. Right. You were born in, parents were born in Poland. Parents were born in Poland. I was born in Poland. Mm -hmm. I was born in, I was born as Ijo Landerus. Uh -huh. My original name was Ijo. Ijo. Which, right which uh, was changed to Itzhak. Uh -huh. And when I came to the United States, we made it Isaac. Isaac. So since then, I'm Isaac. Yeah. I was born in 1935 in Chernov, Poland. In 1940, after the Germans arrived to our town, I was with my father and my sister, and we were separated, and uh, my father sent me to hiding by a Polish person in a village named Shersha. Uh -huh. My grandfather owns a farm in that village and the foreman of that farm took care of me for a while until uh, I had to be transferred to Gora Roshovska. It's somewhere north. Uh -huh. And I was in there till the end of the war. Yeah. And the joy of arriving to Israel while you were in the army, you met this beautiful Aviva. I was in the kibbutz for many years. When I left the kibbutz, I came to, the, to live in town and I met Aviva. 
It's 55 way. years will be this September. Oh, how wonderful. You know something, it's wonderful that you're here tonight, this afternoon, I should say, for the special uh, Eat and Schmooze, especially because, first of all, you entertain, which is wonderful. You sing. Yes, and he and played. He, you play the uh, play accordion. 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 And what is the experience like for you being here? Well, it took many years for him to hear about the Holocaust. Even we to have, talk about it, in other words. Yes, we have a Schindler's List that we didn't open yet from the cellophane. He had a problem until we went to Israel one, one year, and we went to Yad Vashem. And when we went to the place, he, he saw pictures, and in one of the pictures he saw himself going on a bus. They, somebody took the pictures, the Germans or somebody. He sat down, he started to cry, but I think this is, was the moment when he decided, I want to have more information about the yeah. Holocaust. This happens sometimes to people with the, they don't want to talk about it, yeah. or they are very busy about it. So uh, what I think about, I love to, to help those people. Yeah, well, you you're know? here today. Are yes. you going to entertain today? No. She didn't tell us because oh. today, yesterday was Purim. Yes. Yes, I don't know if she didn't tell. Well, anyway, the point of, of coming together and talking and helping them talk about their experience really helps, I think. I think it's a, uh, a very restorative thing. I hope so, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's and wonderful. And the stories are going down, down, and in a few more years, nobody will remember anymore. Yeah. So that's why we have to, to tell it to the second generation and the third generation, too. We have already a fourth generation. Yeah, we yeah. have great-grandchildren. Oh, great? oh, how wonderful. They live in Israel. Uh -huh. My daughter made Aliyah, and... The three of my gra our grandchildren already uh, serve in the, the army, army, the Israeli army. I have to tell you something. You should feel so good about yourself every day. after having been what you've gone through yeah. and to come to this situation with such a, a zest for life. Right. I'm very proud of you and I'm very and pleased to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing thank your you. story. That was an impactful program. It really was, and our guests were so passionate about the work that they do in keeping the memory of the Holocaust alive. It's so important never to forget. Yes, it's all our responsibilities, and you too. And thank you so much for being with us. Be with us again next week when we have another look into the Jewish world. Goodbye from Mosaic.